At the beginning of the year, I made over our pantry to be a little bit more organized and aesthetically pleasing. And at the end of that video, I actually mentioned that I was interested in DIYing a sliding barn door. And that's exactly what we are going to be doing today. It's my first go at creating a large sliding barn door. We did create the DIY mini one for Callie's dog door, which I'll link for you. But we're jumping into this and actually testing out this Makita wireless miter saw. As a part of the perspective program with Home Depot, I do not know if all of you are aware, but I do tool reviews with Home Depot throughout the year of different tools that I've never used. So we're gonna be using this one thoroughly today. The stand is sold separately from the miter saw itself. I have linked both products down below for you. The miter saw is actually powered by two LXT batteries. This technology just delivers more power and speed and runtime without the hassles of having a cord. If you are receiving this brand new, my two batteries actually were dead, so I needed to plug those in. The batteries and the charger itself are included within the box as well. If you were to ask me what I did the majority of my projects on, I would have to say it is a miter saw. So if you're looking for a saw to start with, this is a great one. In particular because you can do different angled cuts and we are going to need a 45 degree angle for the geometric art we will be putting together for the door. I ripped down some quarter inch plywood that was not laminated on either side so I can stain and paint it down to four inch strips and then I cut those down at a 45 degree angle to start to lay them out on the MDF that was the door backing. When I assembled the miter saw off camera I thought that I did it correctly but it looks like when I put the blade on I put it at an angle I didn't realize I had to pop in a little bit more you'll see that the red laser is split that is not supposed to happen so that's what led me to realize that I had the blade just like tweaked a little bit I had to remove it and place it on straight to get that laser one line and get the blade to not hit obviously the back end of the miter saw so that was a bad on my end it was totally just a rookie mistake once that was fixed I had to cut down a decent amount of wood at a 45 degree angle just to get started to see where I wanted the design to go Makita built an electronically controlled BL motor that delivers 4800 rpm for fast and smooth cutting you can definitely feel how like butter it is honestly now out using this for about a month now um, I've noticed that with any wood it just feel like it goes through it with ease and yes obviously it helps having a brand new blade but it also has an automatic speed change technology that adjusts cutting speed and torque during cut for the optimum performance so it's not like you're cutting a two by four then going to this thin plywood it's not cutting at the same rate it adjusts and I put that to test once I read that spec on this miter saw by stacking up the quarter inch plywood and clamping them down nice and tight and cutting them in bulk, which saved me a ton of time. Now for the fun part, figuring out the design after cutting down the pieces at a 45 degree angle. I honestly started laying these pieces of wood at random and you can see that I marked out a place for a window because I wasn't sure if I was going to do that 100% yet. So I didn't want to cut that out before making that decision, obviously. The backing that I'm using is 84 inches by 38 inches and that's going to be able to go around the molding of my pantry. I used my circular saw to cut that down to size just with a chalk line and a straight edge and I'm also using a three quarter inch thick ultralight MDF that my local lumber yard had on hand and I decided to pick it up and test out because I've never used it before. As I started laying out the quarter sheet plywood pieces, I personally think that the four inch of this specific type of wood doesn't look the classiest. So I thought if I stripped it down to two inches or in half, that little strip, that little uh, whistle was a little bit awkward, that I could turn it into like an Alexander Z inspired piece that I did for the dog door and kind of tie those two doors together to ground the room. So next year when I go in and decorate and redo the hardwood floors, I can use that as a source of inspiration since those will be the main focal points. I decided to go ahead and do a plunge cut with my circular saw to create a window. If you do not know how to do this, please do not try it. Uh, the saw can kick back fairly easy if you don't want to do it this way you can drill a hole into each corner with a drill bit and then use a jigsaw to cut the window piece out but I just did a plunge cut situation and then went in with my multi-tool to get that piece out of there. After cutting a piece that was a little bit smaller than the window I am using, I'm using a piece of glass from Home Depot that's 24 by 36. I'm just going in my router and routing out a little bit of the material to be able to have a place to insert the window and put an adhesive so it actually sticks and also have a space to use silicone to be able to um, seal it all up. Wow, sorry, that my brain just shut down for a second. I 
I stained down all the strips of wood just at random. I didn't really have a method. I just kind of connected the colors and made sure they were flowing through. And then I started to hate it because that like dark brown, I'm so over. It just kind of reminds me of poop at this point and it's all over my house. And I really just didn't want to carry that through this piece, but I decided to not make any hasty decisions and go forward with actually putting this onto the MDF before I decide to freak out and redo the entire thing. I actually picked up this tip from DIY Huntress's tutorial. She uses a combination of wood glue and rapid fuse, and I thought that was pretty smart, so I decided to execute that here when assembling the pieces onto the MDF backing. One thing that I heard time and time again when you're doing a large scale door like this is to ensure that your first piece is at a 45 degree angle so then when you step back everything isn't going like tilted one way or the other or just looking all sorts of wonky. So I use my speed square for that and then I secure it with the wood glue rapid fuse and my nail gun. A pin nailer will leave less of a mark if any. I kind of wanted that rustic look because when I redo the decor in my house it's going to be very clean and modern so I still wanted to add some texture and warmth with this door. After Callie left me because she realized I need to work and I had a lot more to go, I just flicked on my little Joanna that I love so much to keep me company and powered through the rest of the design. And if I'm going to be honest, uh, this door took me on and off about a month to make. I didn't charge the batteries at all during that time in between the other projects. I left both the original batteries that I charged from the beginning of this project in this miter saw and they still have not died uh, even with my procrastination. So there's that. Take that for what you will. <laughs> Another tip is I had no idea what I was doing during this entire time and I hope that if anybody wants to execute something large scale like this and is their first time that they can use me as an example like it might not necessarily be perfect when you get up close and personal but you can be damn proud because this is completely customizable for your space and it's very easy to make it is tedious though so just be prepared if you're taking something on like this for the first time. Once I stepped back, I did notice that I still was not a fan of the color or design. So I sanded it down because I knew that I was gonna end up doing something. And if I scuffed up the surface, it would make it easier to do whatever I decided that I wanted to do when I actually thought of it. But I still didn't know what I wanted to do. I would move on to cutting off the excess with my circular saw. And that was at the point in time where it was time to make a call. And the call was, now hear me out, this wasn't necessarily an easy build, but what I can say is that if I wanted to rebuild it in a different way, more modern, sleek, a different color, that I feel confident enough to be able to do that over a weekend now that I kind of understand what I'm getting myself into. And I don't necessarily have to put as many pieces. I can go into a different direction. I can use different materials. Same thing with you. Yours doesn't have to look like this, nor do you have to do like the Alexander Z inspired, but because I already have that in my home and I wanna tie the room together, I decided to just paint it white and then I can revisit it next year when I get the decor or the hardwood floors going and make that decision or cross that bridge when we get to it. I use a 220 grit in between each coat of primer and paint to make it as smooth as possible. For me, I decided to not make the trim flush to the back of the door. That's because our dog door has that lip of the frame. So I executed the same thing for this door as well. I secured it with my nail gun and repeated the same trim process to the window portion because I didn't want that to be left out. I think it would look a little bit awkward. Before flipping the door over to install the window, I had to notch out a part of the frame that was sticking up to make it flush. Typically, you do not have to do this, but because I designed it to be lipped up, you do have to make sure when installing the hardware that it is flush to the door. I link the hardware that I'm using in this video down below, but there are a ton of different options as well. As I mentioned before, I do not have to do anything to this piece of glass. It is pre-cut at my local Home Depot in the window section. That's where you can find a couple of different sizes as well. But if you want to cut it, you can use a glass cutting kit that they have available in that section too. 
I secured it with some construction adhesive and then I just weighted that down with a bunch of different power tools I had on hand until that was dry to be able to use the clear silicone to go around it to ensure that this does not fall out. Okay, before we start judging about colorways and whatnot, keep in mind what I told you about the fireplace. That was the inspo to completely redo downstairs heading into the new year. So with that in mind, let's just remove the old door, pop this new baby on. We know that we got to get rid of the wall decor to the right. It just isn't flowing and going anymore. But I decided to do a headboard for this door just to tie that neutral tone of wood upwards like I did with the doggy door. The instructions are included in the sliding barn door hardware that you receive. It lets you know what you should do for drywall anchors or into studs and also how to install the headboard too. Last but not least, you know I am all about the details. So I found this pantry decal on Amazon. It is linked below for you. And I followed the instructions and placed that onto the glass where I wanted it, where I thought I wanted it. I used my laser level so it was level, but it was not centered when I stepped back. I honestly have no idea how much my brain farted. I had to order another one that's coming in a couple of days. So it'll look nice and pretty on my Instagram when that is, you know, installed correctly but I wanted to share that with you because I <laughs> I don't even know. It happens and it's fixable, it's a decal, I'm not tripping. So with the result of this, please keep in mind that I am redoing the pantry, but I didn't wanna wait a couple more days to reshoot it. I wanted to share that, hey, we're all human and we make mistakes, big, small, and even the, the most like, how did you even make that? Even with the slightly askew sign, I am completely in love with this piece, even though I know I'm gonna have to make more tweaks when I do decide on flooring and decor next year. But for right now, I am very happy with the depth this has added to the room, as well as the texture, just because I felt like it was very flat before, because it was like the white fireplace and the white solid door and another white solid door, and then there's another white solid door. So it's just a lot going on. I like that you can kind of peek into the pantry too and see all of your snacks. I hope that you guys enjoyed this DIY. I will also be removing that like speaker box to the left of it. I just did not want to try to begin to mess with that and ruin something else. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know this is very project based. I miss these. I'm excited to get back to even bigger projects, but I do have a lot of different makeovers coming up for you this month that I think you guys will get a kick out of because there's a big variety. I will see you soon for another DIY.